here. As you know, the church, he's, it's his first time here, and uh, a lot of you might not know him. And uh, it was, I had the privilege and honor when we went to Burkina Faso, Africa. Uh, Doc put a team of prophets together to minister to Assembly of God pastors uh, all there in, in Africa. And uh, we stepped out of the plane and uh, went into the uh, facility that we were to stay there uh, for a whole week. And it was wonderful to meet the different ministries. I was the only one from the West Coast, and I was a woman. <gasps> yep, yeah, I'm glad you're back. <laughs> the the uh, African people wanted to see a woman, and so he called me to come, and I didn't really want to go, and uh, a lot of you were instrumental in raising the finances for me to go. Pastor Eddie, your church had me uh, come and minister and raise money, and uh, we went and landed there, and, and this is where uh, I think the first uh, meeting we had, Mike, together, was there in Burkina Faso, and that was how many years ago? Ten years ago. And so uh, Philip and I and uh, Mike and all the rest of the team, and like I said, a lot of the ministry was East Coast. I had uh, not been familiar with a lot of those churches, but uh, I was introduced to them, and what a wonderful time we had there ministering prophetically to pastors. And they were pastors that had churches under them. And uh, then I didn't really have much contact with you. And in fact, uh, you didn't have contact with me either. And so then, uh, Philip, I told uh, Philip we needed a presbyter, and he recommended Mike. And uh, he's such a blessing. And uh, when we begin to share and talk about our lives, there's so much history that we've had together, and yet our passage has been pass passing back and forth, and so I am so eager to hear from him tonight, and so would you welcome, please, Mike Holcomb, as he comes to minister the Word of God to us. Do you love him tonight? Yes. Oh, come on, put your hand up and say, I love him. Yes. He's the reason we're here. Hallelujah. Yeah, I remember that uh, those meetings were quite interesting. I think in four days, a team of eight prophets, we ministered over 250 pastors of pastors, prophetically. Yeah. And I think we had three meetings a day, and uh, they would uh, shuffle us off to these little huts, and then two by twos, and then we would prophesy, somebody would be over there recording, and it was just, it was just really interesting. But uh, yeah, this is my first time here. I have friends in uh, uh, San Bernardino, and of course we knew the Foxes over the years really well. Brother Fox uh, came to the East Coast, he and Elvin Wilson, in the uh, 1970s, late 70s, and to a little tiny church in Maryland. Elkton, Maryland, out in the middle of nowhere, and God began to move, and, and uh, in just a short while, literally hundreds of pastors were touched by the move of God. Yeah. And it was just tremendous. So that got us related with the Fox family, and of course, Brother Steve and I, we got to know each other pretty good. That guy was nuts. <laughs> Amen. But God is so good. Well, let's just pray real quick tonight, because... How many know we all need the Lord? Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you tonight for this time. We thank you for this conference. We thank you for the miracle of 60 years. We thank you, Lord, for the souls that have been saved. We thank you for the people that have been healed. We thank you for the prophecies. We thank you for the works that have been started, the works that have effect, been affected by this church. And our prayer is... Lord, that we'll see yet another 60 years to come in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray tonight that you would minister through your word. We want to close our hearts and our ears and our minds off of everything else except you and your word tonight. Yes, Touch us by your Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. I'm going to direct your attention, first of all, to the book of... Ecclesia, or excuse me, Exodus. And by the way, I want to say what a privilege it is to be with Brother Phil. It's been a while. Uh, 
I got to tell you, every time he spoke at our church, it was such a delight. He's such a um, tremendous man of God. Can we give him a clap? He bought a word this morning. Always preaches his heart out. Amen. And uh, just love him so much. And, you know, I, I told my wife, uh, by the way, my wife and I just celebrated 35 years of marriage this last June. And I told my wife, I said, isn't it great, the people that God helped us to meet over the years. The rich, rich ministers. I mean, you know, there's, I, I've talked to people and, and they're just deficit of really good, deep teachers of God, men of God. But we've had, what a privilege. Hallelujah. What a heritage. Yeah. Come on, say amen tonight. Amen. We are blessed by the Lord. So, Brother Phil is one of those guys that I, I'm so deeply appreciative of, of having known. Exodus chapter 15, and I want to just glance at one verse tonight. I wonder if you'd stand for the reading of God's Word. Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness? Here it is. Awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders. Yeah. And I'd love to preach to you tonight about the God of wonders. You can be seated. The Bible is filled with signs, wonders, and miracles. From beginning to end. And I just don't see how anybody can take a look at this book and not see the supernatural. This is not just a philosophical work. This is not just some sort of religious text. This is the will and the word of God. Do you believe it tonight? Yes. And I believe that no matter what happens, this book will stand when the worlds are on fire. Can you say amen? amen? This book will never end. Jesus said, every not one jot, not one tittle will pass away. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but not my word. Not my word. I wish if you've got a Bible, just raise it up tonight and lift it. If you've got a cell phone with a Bible on it, amen. But the precious word of God. But this word is filled with the wonders of God. God is a supernatural God. Thank you, Lord. And Jesus came not stepping away from that profile, but augmenting it. Do you remember when Peter was preaching in the house of Cornelius and he told about how that Jesus of Nazareth was anointed by God, and then he went about doing good, amen, and casting out devils, for the Lord was with him. Jesus came doing miracles. And I've got news for you tonight. Miracles are not over with. Miracles are not a thing of the past. Signs and wonders and gifts and supernatural manifestations are just as much a part of Christianity as anything else. I want to tell you a few stories tonight. I came from, I come from a family of preachers. I'm actually a fifth generation preacher. And so I want to tonight reach back in my family album, and I want to share some things with you because I believe that God is still moving by His Spirit. Yes, amen. My great grandmother um, had gotten filled with the Holy Ghost in 1906. A man by the name of G.B. Cashwell in North Carolina, Dunn, North Carolina, heard about in his denomination, heard about a little street called Azusa. And what God was doing, pouring out His Spirit, people were being baptized with the Holy Ghost, 
And for the first time, it seemed were speaking with other tongues. At least this became a major doctrine. And so his holiness denomination sent G.D. Cashwell and some other elders out. In two weeks' time, they were filled with the Spirit. G.D. Cashwell felt like he got everything he needed. He got back on the train, him and the elders, and went back to Dunn, North Carolina, and began to preach about being filled with the Spirit of God and speaking with other tongues. My grandmother, great-great-grandmother, was in those meetings. 18 years old, and she began to speak with other tongues. She went home to her Baptist father, Baptist lay minister, and he said, Mary, he said, I understand that you were in those meetings. She said, yes, it was. He said, if you don't denounce this, you're getting kicked out of the house. She said, Dad, I can't. How can I deny what God has done? Do you ever feel that way? <laughs> well, sure enough, he kicked her out of the house, and, uh, and uh, long, long story short, she got a, a vision of hell. And she was praying one day, and God spoke to her, much like the founder of this church, who said, you need to win souls. And so for the rest of her life, she carried in her big purse tracks, and she was witnessing. But she went around and, and uh, was a woman preacher. Well, back in those days, my goodness, that was talking about persecution. Isn't it wonderful we've got women preachers today? they got some more freedom. Hey, man, God is... Is bringing deliverance, but back in her day, boy, you just didn't hear about that. She was quite the scandal, and yet God used her to plant seven churches in North Carolina, and Ohio, and various places. Fast forward several years, and this is actually the story I want to tell you. She, um, God had called her, and here she was, this little—I say little. Uh, she was actually about 300 pound woman. <laughs> but uh, redhead uh, gal from North Carolina. And God calls her to downtown uh, in Brooklyn. And uh, so she went down and no, didn't know anybody. And rented out a little tiny store. I've seen the store. It's about 35 feet wide, about 75 feet deep. And it was a torn down place right under the L train. I don't know if you remember where that is on McDonald Avenue. And uh, she put chairs out there, little rickety chairs, put a pulpit out there. And then right behind the pulpit she had uh, a, a, a curtain. It was actually a, a bed sheet that she stretched out, sewn together, stretched out. And behind there was her bed and she had a hot plate. But Grandma knew one thing. She knew how to pray. And she prayed. I'm told that there were times when she would raise up to six and eight hours a day, praying in the Spirit, getting lost in God. I mean, oh, we need people to get lost in God today. <laughs> Hallelujah. But she, here she was, God, God called her, and she was struggling. Her brother had, had been funding her, and she had another sister who didn't live to her very far away who was supporting her, but nobody was really coming to the church. And um, she prayed. She said, God, I know you called me here. I know you've, you know, wanted me to come here. Well, back in those days, uh, there was a man by the name of Jack Coe. He was a healing evangelist. And at the time, he had bought the world's largest canvas tent. He called it the Kendra Canvas Cathedral. It seated 35,000 people. And he set it up right, I think it was right, right by, uh, you know, one of the piers. And nobody wanted to come. Because back in those days, Pentecostals were considered a cult. Nobody wanted to come. And uh, there was one uh, African-American pastor who had invented, who invited him and sat on the platform. And my grandfather was sitting in that first meeting. Just a few people scattered all over the place. And Brother Coe was a very strong uh, man of God. And he came up to the pulpit and he announced. He said, I want you to know something before the end of this week. He said, this... This 35,000 tent is going to be packed full and people are going to be standing outside of, of the tent. And sure enough, in a week's time, the whole place was packed. People were coming to see the miracle power of God. Great grandma was in those meetings. And as the meetings went on, she was sitting, she would stand in the back and watch God heal people. Cancers fall off. Ears amen, opening up by the power of God. All kinds of tremendous things. And one night, as she was standing in the back, just basking in the power and glory of God, she noticed a little family walking away. They were, it was a, uh, they were escorting an older man, and they were crying. 
And she went over to them and she said, what's the matter? And she said, well, we brought Grandpa here. He's blind and uh, we're Jewish. But we heard about these meetings and we, uh, we wanted to come. We, we, wanted, we were hoping that somehow uh, Grandpa would get healed. But there's so many people here, and, and it was true. There was hundreds coming up, standing in the prayer line. She said, they said, there's so many people. I don't think we can get to them tonight. We've got to take Grandpa home. My great-grandmother said, listen, the same Jesus that's up there is right here. Yes. Yeah, come yes. on. Yes. Amen. And she laid hands on that little Jewish man, and she prayed for him in the name of Jesus, blessed them, and walked him, and watched them as they walked away and got in their car. The next Sunday, she walked, opened up that little curtain, and now all of a sudden, there was, there was the church was packed full of people. They were all Jewish people. Grandpa had gotten healed. Yeah. Come on, praise God here. Yeah. Hallelujah. I said, God does wonders. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, I can tell you the stories. I can tell you the stories. I'm going to hasten on them because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about Grandpa now. My grandfather. And uh, man, hit her son. What a man of faith. Oh my goodness. God would speak. He had 12 kids. My mom was the second of 12. And uh, God would just speak to him. And man, they would off. They would go and plant a church. And then off they were again and plant another church. And just that was his kind of, of ministry. And oh, the miracles of provision. But the one that I want to tell you tonight was one that I saw myself. He was by this time in his late 50s, early 60s. And uh, he had all, all for years, he felt like God wanted him to start a Bible school. And uh, he just, you know, he, here he was, he's now in his, again, late 50s. And he was in a meeting in Lemon Springs, North Carolina, um, living in Virginia, but had gone down to this little church, and he, one, one night, on the platform, he, somebody else was preaching, and he was praying under his breath, thinking about this desire that God had put in his heart about a Bible school. He said, Lord, I really think you forgot me. I really think you forgot me. The next morning, there's another meeting. He's sitting on the platform, and a little lady from the choir came down, walked around, walked up to the front, and she pointed her finger, and she said, Thus saith the Lord, you said that I forgot about you. But in 30 days you'll have $30,000 and you will begin to build your building and you will put seven windows on that building for the seven spirits of God. In 30 days you have $30,000. There's a Bible school of every day. Come on, raise your hand and praise God. I still know the story I was going to tell you. <laughs> So I was there in the second year of that Bible school. And um, by this time, we were starting to work on the second building. And we were already meeting in the first, the first uh, floor, the underground floor. And we had finished that. Now we were starting the upper floor. And um, the county came to him and said, Reverend Crandall, uh, we know that you're going to be putting this large building and uh, we want it wanted you to be aware of something. You know you can't just have the electric that you've got now. You have to have three-phase electric in coming in. There's all these students. There's a brand new building. You can't just have the same. Uh, I said, he said, okay, well, that, that's fine. Uh, how much is it going to cost? $70,000. He said, $70,000? I don't have $70,000. He said, I've poured my life into what we already have. All my life, I don't have a life savings. How many know that when you're working for God, sometimes it's not normal? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, Grandpa was, he wasn't upset, but he was just groaning in his spirit. God, you called me. You know, he had a big gruffy voice. God, you called me to this place. What's going on? So he just was walking around the house and groaning in his spirit. You know what? I, I, I really believe there are speaking with other tongues, but then there's groaning in the Holy yeah. Ghost. You can't say it. It's not utterable, but you're groaning it. So here he is, and he's right in the middle of this time of intercession and need and, and just pressure. And um, He goes up to this little church. In fact, it was the same church that Brother Fox and Brother Wilson were ministering at, a little convention up there. And uh, so he went up there, and he was 
attending the meetings, not so much speaking. And they had a, a, a morning meeting with just pastors. Pastors are coming and praying. So he was a little late. And so he just decided, well, I'll slip in the back pew. And he says, God, I, I, I just don't feel like I want to go up front today. So he laid down on the ground between the pews. And he's groaning again. God, you called me. What's going on? He said, all of a sudden, from the depths of his gut, he felt laughter. And he said, he felt it coming up, and it came out, and all of a sudden, he said, I couldn't help it. I put my hand over my mouth. I couldn't retain it. And before you know it, I am laughing out loud. Brother Johnny Nichols, one of the younger ministers, ran back and said, Brother Crandall, are you okay? Are you okay? He said, you'd be laughing too if God, if you had $70,000. He said, I got $70,000. I feel it right in my hand. It's in my hand. I feel it. He went home, and sure enough, he got a phone call. It was the electric company. Uh, we don't know how to say this, but, well, we voted, and, and we're just going to give you the electric. Woo! Put your hands up. Hallelujah. And I saw, I saw every single one of those fresh green telephone poles being pounded in. And we opened a Bible school. Amen. That, that summer. Amen. That, that, that right. semester. I'm telling you, we serve a God of wonders. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can I tell you another story? <laughs> so my mom and dad. Okay. Now my mom's. My mom's dad is Brother Crandall. So my mom and dad, they were married in 64, 63, excuse me, at being 65. And in 1969, uh, they, they were asked by a, a group of young people, hey, you know, would you just come and just, let's have a little Bible study. So believe it or not, they were meeting out in the country in a basement. Now, there's no more seclusion than being out in the country and in a basement. Amen. But they began to pray a dangerous prayer. Lord, send revival. Yep. Send revival. Send revival. Send revival. Now, I don't know why, but back in those days, we had Saturday night and then Sunday morning. Most of the time, we had Sunday morning, Sunday night. I remember those days. But we had a Saturday night service, and one Saturday night, down those basement steps came barefooted hippies. And man, they got on fire for God. One of the women, her name was Star. She was the she was the ringleader of all the drug culture and the hippie movement in Williamsport. And in the in the summer of 1970, she brought dozens and dozens and dozens. My dad baptized so many people in creeks, in pools, in I remember in the middle of the winter them chopping away the ice and people getting baptized. Hallelujah. God, God answered their prayers. And that's the way our ministry started. And then we begin to see over the years, just God would always bring in these evangelists, these tremendous people. And you know, let me just pause here this moment. Because I really believe that God wants to do something fresh and new here at this church. And I really believe that God wants to begin to fill these, these seats with young people. In fact, in fact, where's the young man that sang? You sang tonight. Where, where are you? Can you stand up? I want you to stand as a proxy for the young people that are about to come. And I really believe, and I submit this to the pastors, but I believe with all my heart that you guys need, I don't know what youth ministry you're doing, but I need, I, I feel in my heart you are to intensify. You need to concentrate. There are young people that are hungry for God. Amen. They, they're not churched. They're not, they're rude and everything else, but they are hungry. And how many know that God is in the feeding business? I'm not done with you. Stand up. Stand up and lift your hands. Because, brother, there was an anointing on you tonight. And the Lord says, son, I am going to use you mightily, says God. Don't compare your voice to anybody else. Don't compare your music to anybody else. Don't compare your playing. Because God says, I'm going to use you. Lift your voice. Find the venues. Find the gigs. And begin to sing. And God is going to use you powerfully. Brother, there's not a little 
ministry, a little anointing for you. There is not a little anointing for you. Can you say amen? How many bear witness for that? saved and the people that got saved in, in, in my mom and dad's ministry was a man by the name of John G. John, the correct Italian name was Giganito. We call him John G. And uh, John had uh, a horrific history. He had uh, early on his parents split up and uh, you know just so typical unfortunately of today and uh, you know, his dad beat him, and uh, he's out on the streets at 15. He started experimenting with drugs and got a fantastic job in the middle of Manhattan, glazing all of these tremendous buildings and working for figures like Calvin Klein. But uh, by the time he hit his mid-30s, uh, he, he just self-destructed. He became a heroin addict. Uh, actually, he'd been a heroin addict. But it culminated. He lost his... Lost his wife, lost his son, lost his career, lost everything. And uh, in those days, uh, if you got you know arrested, a lot of a popular place to come was our home, my hometown. And so the judge said, "Listen, you can either go to jail or you can have rehabilitation in this little tiny city called Williamsport, which, by the way, the Little League World Series is being played there right now. That's my hometown." <laughs> anyway. So John G. came to Williamsport. He had a pair of underwear, and then back in the early 80s, a $180 pair of sneakers, clothes on his back, that's it. And he, he stumbled one day, he came into our church, and God got a hold of that guy. Totally delivered him from heroin, just like that. He became a witnessing machine. In fact, in the recovery community, they call him Grateful John. He'd stand up and start singing about Jesus, couldn't get 15 minutes through, he'd start crying, and people would start getting saved. I'm going to tell you something. I've seen God do tremendous things. Yes! We're talking about a God of wonders. We're talking about a God, amen, who's tonight saying to us, yes. there's more. Yes, there's more. There's more. There's more. Let me tell you something. By the word of the Lord, there is more. You say, well, I've seen a lot, but there's still more. Oh, we've, we've seen some tremendous things, and glory to God. And listen, I rejoice in you tonight, 60 years, but let me tell you something. Yesterday cannot win today's battles. Even your own testimonies. Yesterday, amen, thank God for yesterday. Thank God you prayed those bills in. Thank God that this happened. I thank God that, amen, I had a little grandmother who prayed for somebody in the back of a tent and they got healed. I thank God for a grandfather who prayed through and saw, amen, $70,000 given to him. I thank God for my parents and all the things that they saw, the miracles of, and tremendous things. But listen, this is now 2013. We need new miracles. Come on, put your hands up and raise God. We're serving a God of wonders. But here's the caveat. We think that because we've been preaching or listening to sermons or studying our Bible for years and years and years that somehow we're expert at revival, at miracles, at signs. I'm here to tell you something that's not true. Right. I'm going to give a little bit more of my testimony, my personal testimony tomorrow morning. But I'm going to tell you something. God, you're looking at somebody that God has taken through the ringer. Amen. And God has, has, has met me face to face and said, Mike, you thought you were this, 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 and this. But I'm going to tell you something. Mr. Holcomb, you are zero. There's only one expert. There's only one great one. There's only one great prophet. Only one great apostle. Only one great pastor. Only one great teacher. Only one great evangelist. And his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. And he's here. And he wants to do great and wonderful things. Let me tell you something. Jesus came not with a little bit of apologetic. Here, let me pray for you. He came with boldness. And 
he casts out devils. I'm here to tell you something. There's people that are walking the streets, amen, right now. They don't need a counseling session. They don't need a sermon. They don't need just another example. They need hands laid on them, and they need deliverance. Praise his name. Jesus. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. Amen. His name is Jesus. He saved you. He delivered you. He healed your body. He brought your home together. He was the one, hallelujah, who did great things in your life. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm telling you, he's here tonight. He's here. I'm telling you, I, I am personally in Portland, Oregon. I am personally watching people in my city, around the United States, and around the world who have a Pentecostal spirit filled heritage. Throw their heritage away. Because they don't want to offend anybody. Because they don't want to get weird. Because they want to make everything nice and understandable to people. There's only one problem. Jesus doesn't work that way. We can pack people in. Do you realize you can pack people in? But that doesn't mean they're changed. We're in the business with Jesus of seeing souls absolutely metamorphosized. Yes. What we're talking about is a supernatural gospel. Yes, sir. Okay. A supernatural thing. I was just telling somebody the other day, in fact, uh, just today, you can go on YouTube. There's a channel called One for Israel. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. But it gives, check that out. In the playlist, you'll find testimonies of Jewish people who had tremendous revelation of Jesus Christ and became a Christian. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In fact, I heard a joke the other night. It was uh, one, <laughs> there was uh, two Jewish men that came together. And the one Jewish man said to the other, he goes, you know what? I just lost my son. He went to a church, and now he's a Christian. And the other Jewish guy says, well, guess what? He says, same thing happened to me. My son went to a church, and now he's a Christian. What do we do about it? Let's pray. So they prayed, and God said, guess what happened to me? <laughs> Oh, that's too good to give up. Hallelujah. But God's doing something. Let me tell you something. We're not going to throw the Jewish people away. We're embracing them in the name of Jesus. And we are seeing, not going to see, we are seeing a revival among, amen, the seed of Abraham. And there's going to be a day even this church says, God, you're going to join hand in hand and you're going to praise God and worship and you're going to realize, amen, God has one body. Hallelujah. Yes. Two and ten. Greek and barbarian. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God's doing a thing all over the world. Hallelujah. Woo. See, I, you can't talk me out of this. It's like the old song says. You can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me tell you one story about uh, what God has done in my life. I was kind of a, I was always, I've been in youth ministry really, started in 1990, uh, no, 1983, and uh, not, not full time or anything, but I've been gone to different churches and everything else, and, and I had had a, a, an experience in church with the prophetic, um, and I just, I just started speaking in tongues, and, 
uh, it was the beginning of me just ministering over people, praying, and I'd give them a little word and everything else. And how many know you got to start somewhere? Yeah. 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 Come on, you got to start somewhere. Well, I had this desire to really do something for God. And uh, I went to Bible school, as I said, and the first semester of Bible school, uh, I got a phone call. In fact, it was just like within the first couple of weeks of Bible school, I got this phone call from Brother Donnie Bledsoe. Amen. In Hickory, North Carolina. I know all the, I have these North Carolina connections. And um, he says, Brother Mike, he says, can you come and do our youth ministry? I said, I'd love to. Yes, absolutely. And he said, well, he said, we start in such and such a date. Uh, meetings usually start at 7 o'clock. And, and uh, so we're looking forward to it. I said, okay, I'll see you then. So I hung the phone. <laughs> And I didn't have any paper or pen, and I forgot all about it. So about a month later, I'm having lunch. Somebody comes running down. And by the way, this was before cell phones. <laughs> Somebody came running down and said, uh, hey, uh, uh, you got a phone call. And I went to the front, run upstairs, got the phone. And, hey, it's Brother Donnie Bledsoe. We're looking forward to you coming tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, 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 Brother Bledsoe, okay, all right. So I hung up the phone. Oh, my word, panic just came right over me. And I went down to the chapel, and it was empty. And, and I just was praying, God, 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 you got to help me. Give me something, you know. And uh, all of a sudden, I heard the Lord say, watch what I do. That's it. Watch what I do. Okay. So the next day, sure enough, I got my brother, Mark. Mark. Uh, he's a tremendous piano player and worship leader. And he got a friend, another friend, and we all jumped into this little beat up uh, uh, BMW and uh, our, our Mercedes Benz, kind of thing, but, and headed down, this, you know, down the road. Now remember, on the big legal, yellow legal paper, writing, you know, Jesus is our peace, you know, that was what I was going to preach on. So we get there, and we thought, well, we'll get there, like, you know, tark time, six o'clock, be able to get in there, change, everything will be great. We get there, and at 6 o'clock, and there's Brother Blood, so he's standing at the, at the driveway of this, you know, this, this uh, camp. And uh, he said, oh, he said, ah, I made a mistake. He said, we start at 6. You only have five minutes to change. So, ah, okay. So we went down to the cabin, and three guys, you know, clothes are going everywhere. Ryan back upstairs, a, a back up to the, they had a big meeting hall, about three or 400 kids. And uh, so sure enough, the meeting got underway. Mark starts playing, you know, and, and I, I finally got up, and boy, I started preaching, and I was preaching like a house of fire. And uh, all of a sudden, the Lord said, right in the middle of my message, he said, stop preaching and start praying for people. I, I think, you know, I mean, I, I, okay, what am I going to do? I close the Bible, and I said, we're, we're going to stand up now, and we're just going to begin to pray for kids. And I prayed for one or two kids here, and, and I still was like, this is crazy. This is nuts, you know. And uh, I, I felt to uh, pray for this little guy, and I called him out. He stood there, and I didn't know what in the world to pray for him about, you know. And, and I thought, God, what in the world are you? What did you do? So I did what every pastor does, you know, when you need to think about things. I said, let's all stand up and praise God. We all did. We stood up and praised the Lord. I'm like twiddling my thumbs. God, what do I do? You know. And all of a sudden, down on my left, I saw this shaft of light. It was about seven feet tall. And it came down the aisle, came over to me, came, this is the way I describe it, on me and in me. And I heard these words. This boy is nine years old. He's been coming to the church for two and a half years. And the greatest desire of his heart is that his daddy be saved. I didn't know what to do with that, Pastor Kay. I never. That was clear. So uh, I said, well, uh, how old are you? He says, I'm nine years old. I said, uh, how long have you been coming to church? He said, two and a half years. And then I just repeated what I heard. And I said, in the greatest desire of your heart is your daddy be saved. And he started crying. He said, it's true, it's true, it's true. Daddy's an alcoholic. Mommy and I have been coming and praying and praying for him. And that was the beginning of the word of knowledge in my life. And, and God has taken me around. I, this is, this is, I'm just telling you my experience. 35 countries. But I'm going to tell you something. Time after time after time. 
I have stood behind that pulpit. I have stood in front of those people. I didn't have a thing to say. How many know prophets don't sit there in it six hours before and memorize everybody's name? And he, you know, and he, he, I'm not a mind reader. I, 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 I make mistakes, but man, I mean, but I've heard God, and I know He speaks, yes. and I know He does incredible things. Yes. Can I tell you just one more story? Yes. <laughs> All right, this is with Doc Wilson. So Doc Wilson had me out to Columbus, Ohio. It's a large Pentecostal church, formal Pentecostal church, in fact. I'd never been there before. He said, I really need you. We only have one. I'm the only prophet for the first night, and this, the other guy is not going to come till the next. I really, you know, I really need you to come. I said, okay. So in those days, I was traveling. My wife and I have two daughters. We were traveling with our daughters. They were quite small in those days. And I like to take my family every time if I possibly can. How many know you got to have your kids right with you? Come on. Amen. So, um, yep, sure enough, we, we started down. And I had calculated that it would take so many hours to get to, to Columbus. Well, we hit traffic. It started snowing at one particular point. And all of a sudden, I'm looking at the clock and thinking, oh, boy, I'm not going to have the time I wanted to, you know, to get to the room and pray and have the kids down and everything else. And so uh, I said, okay, that, that's fine. And uh, so then we get to Columbus. Now, Columbus has, I don't even know what the name of the route is. It's got, a, it's got a circular highway around it, all the way around it. And so we get on there, and I'm looking at the pastor's directions. I said, this doesn't make any sense. And I'm looking at the clock. I'm looking at the directions. And finally, I said, I said Kim, we've got to pull off. Uh, you know, i got to call the pastor. So uh, I called up to this pastor, and I said, Pastor, I said, uh, you know, would it be okay if we just get, can we just come straight to the church, and we'll change in one of the Sunday school rooms? And he said, yeah, that's not a problem. So um, here we are, you know, uh, and it just, it, 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 I remember I had made the phone call from a Wendy's, and I uh, hung up the phone, and I, I just felt like, you know what, I better change my clothes right now. So, so I, I got my clothes. Yeah, prophets do that. Um, so so I, I got my clothes and I told my girls, I said, now put your heads down because daddy's going to change the front seat while mommy drives. And so sure enough, I did. I changed in the front seat. And here it is. It's now, it's now almost 7 o'clock. Now it is 7 o'clock. Now it's 10 after 7. And I'm looking at my wife, and she's, you know, and I look, and I said to her, do you realize we're screaming at each other? She said, yes, but we didn't know what was going on. We're, finally, we get this exit. Okay, he said it right there. There's the exit. Take the exit. And I said, I don't know where the church is. So we went to a gas station, and we said, hey, uh, we went to the, uh, behind the guy behind the counter. I said, do you know where such and such church is? And they said, yeah, it's just right down the road, just a mile and a half. You go down there and take it right. I said, thank you. So I get there. It's, you know, it's, we pull into the parking lot. It's 730 now. Church has already started. I, I was thinking, this, this pastor's going to hate my God. See, I'm never coming back to this church, which actually I never did. Um, <laughs> but uh, my wife looked at me, you know, with that look, and she said, uh, I, I'm not coming in. The girls and I are going to the hotel. I said, oh, look, I, I completely understand. So I, I, I snuck in the back of the, I mean, a big formal church, and the pastor's wife was on the, with this big, huge pipe organ and everything else. And it's like, oh, my word. Brother Wilson's right up there. And it's like, I tried sneaking in. Sure enough, Brother Wilson, he had his head down. He looked over. He saw me. He came back. He goes, oh, boy, I'm getting it now. He walked up to me, and he goes, Brother Mike, pastor knows he gave you the wrong directions. Whew. Got me off the hook. Okay, great. So he said, let's go, and we'll talk to the pastor. So the song's going on, you know, and, and uh, uh, we talked to the pastor up front, you know, and then we worked it out that we would just have, you know, half the people this night, and we'd shift it. Okay. 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 Ah, great. So now I, I can, I can kind of, you know, I sit in the pew there, and uh, I thought, Okay, Brother Wilson's going to speak. That's probably about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you know, and that's great. And, and Brother Wilson gets up there in five minutes, he's over with. He's like, come on, Brother Mike, let's go. And I, I look down and my hands are shaking like this. And I thought to myself, I don't even know if I can remember John 3.16. I don't pray, pray for anybody, prophesy over anybody. 
<laughs> and so, you know, so I, I go up, and, uh, I'm, and, you know, it was just the two of us, Brother Wilson and myself. And they brought this lady here, and, and uh, you know, Brother Wilson, the, you know, he looks at me, and, and if you ever worked with him in, in the prophetic, he'd look at you, and, and you could read his mind. You know, you, are you going to go first, or what's going on? So, uh, no, I, I'm, I'm just like, oh, gracious, like, oh. You know, so Brother Wilson starts prophesying, and I'm like, God, I don't, I don't know what to do. One thing I, I determined a long time ago, I'm not going to fake it. Right. I thought to myself, you know what, if, if worse came to worse, I'm just going to pray for this lady. That's, you know, I'm not going to fake thus save the Lord. So I'm like, God, why? I don't understand this. And all of a sudden, I had a vision. Now they had those, I don't know if you've ever saw in your grandma's house, those old-fashioned um, colored glasses that came sometimes green and blue. And you remember those and the gold ones, you know? And they had a pattern on the outside and a really old-fashioned things. And I saw myself, and they had water over there on the stand, and I saw myself take one and just give it to this lady. And uh, so I was like, that's it? God, God you didn't have to get into any words. And he had nothing. You know, uh, you know. Uh, and, okay, and Brother Wilson's done. He's done. He's finished. It's my turn. It's my turn. Nobody else. It's my turn. So I just said, okay, I'm going to do what God told me to do. And I grabbed I grabbed this glass and I went over to the lady and I knelt down in front of her, gave her the, the water bottle. Instantly the power of God came on me. The sea of the Lord! I called you! La, la, la. It was like I just came out of the wilderness and they came in with a burning bush. It's like, man, boom! And I mean, the people were up and they're clapping and praising God and, and you know, and she's walking off crying and everything else is like, and you know, it's like, where did that come from? You know, and then guess what? It left. And the next person came up. And I was like, God, can you more? And he, and he I was like, Lord, you know, where did that power go? Where did that power go? God, 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 you know. And so sure enough, Brother Wilson looks at me. I look at him. <laughs> I, what in the world? I feel backslidden. I, where did that come from? I don't understand. And so here I am. And, and they had this big big, huge, old-fashioned wing-back chair, you know, like they have in, have in a lot of the older congregations. And I was sitting there, and I had another vision. And I saw myself staring out the window, ignoring what was going on. And I thought, God, I am, oh, this pastor's never going to have me back. He never did. <laughs> never going to have me back. But I, what could I do? I was desperate. So I said, okay, Lord, here I go. So I totally ignored the service. I just looked out the window. Sure enough, Brother Wilson got done. I went to the man. I was like, oh, my word. As soon as I touched his back, thou save the Lord. God is going to blah, 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 blah. And I mean, again, the people are up there. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he's like, oh. It happened all four times. My point is, I learned that night, amen, it's not about me. It's about Him. It's about Him. Let me tell you something. I've been woke up in the middle of a sleep, people wanting me to pray for them. I felt about that much spirituality. But I know somebody who cares for the flock. I know somebody who's got a word hot off the press. And His name is Jesus. He's always doing something. He doesn't slumber. He doesn't sleep. He's watching over us. And brother, He's got a burden for the lost that is greater than any burden that you and I could ever have. I'm going to tell you something. Let me just be so bold as to say, I don't care what's happening in our country right now. Because we're on another agenda. I wish you'd stand up and praise God just a moment. I said, we're on another agenda. We're on another trajectory. We are coming from another world. We're coming from another spirit. We've got different power. Hallelujah. We are on, amen, a mission that this world will not be able to destroy. Oh, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen to me. You can be 
city. Listen to me. You think about, oh, it's so terrible today. It's so hard today. And I understand. Listen, we were just having this conversation this, this afternoon. I understand. Amen. The heartache we saw. We went from what seemed to be a Christianized culture into something that is absolutely chaotic and destructive. But I'm here to tell you something. Amen. This is not the first time in history it's happened. Do you realize what the apostles were facing in their day? Talk about big government. You can't think of anything bigger than Rome. If they wanted to up your taxes, there's nothing you could do about it. If they wanted to take your son for the army, nothing you could do about it. If they wanted to confiscate your property, nothing you could do about it. Do you realize that they had, had put their stamp of approval on every other religion under the sun, but the only religion that was the true and pure religion, they ostracized and outlawed. We get, we get afraid because somebody blackballs us on Facebook. I got canceled. These people were being thrown in prison. They were being tortured. They were being dipped in oil and lit in Nero's amen, uh, garden so that he could see at night. Amen. These were people, amen, that were getting their heads chopped off and their fingernails pulled out. There's people tonight as we speak. They are suffering for the body of Christ and for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is nothing new. Roman senators would 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 go to formal event, pardon me, formal events with little boys to service them anytime they needed. Talk about debauchery. Talk about filth. Amen. Everywhere you went, Paul went into Mars Hill and he looked around and all he saw was ungodliness and, 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 and idols and everything else. But I'm going to tell you something. It was in that atmosphere of, of pitch black that the great light of Jesus Christ, amen, began to shine. Amen. And despite of the culture, people began to get saved. People began to get healed. People began to come and give their life to the one true God. I'm here to tell you something. There's nothing impossible for the church to get the realization of Jesus Christ today. Hallelujah. I serve a God of wonders. I serve a God of wonders. Hallelujah. Come on, we all know Hebrews 13a, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, let me just try to bring this plane down tonight. <laughs> I believe there are some of you tonight that are here. And God is calling you to a new level of the supernatural. A new level. Not just the same one. In fact, I believe there are tongues that God wants to bring you into that you've never spoke before. Intercession that you have never interceded before. Visions that you've never seen before. Experiences. Do you know why many people are disconnected? with Christians these days because Christians are disconnected with Jesus. You say, how can that be? I go to my church. I read my Bible. Yeah, but when's the last time you can honestly say, I had experience with Jesus? Not just in church. See, the problem is, is we come to church and we, it's like this becomes our devotional time. Come on. This becomes the time that we're, oh, now we're in the presence of the Lord. Oh, now we're ready to prophesy. Oh, now we're ready to lay hands on the sick. I'm here to tell you something. God wants to use you above and beyond these walls. Yeah. All right, I told you. I, 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 I'll tell you another story. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I had a blind aunt. My name is Florence, Aunt Florence. Blind. And one day she's in prayer and God speaks to her and says, walk across the street and knock on the door and witness to the neighbor. Blind Aunt Florence makes her way to the door, makes her way down across the street, makes her way to the neighbor's steps, up the steps, knocks on the door. Nobody there. Knocks again. Nobody comes. Knocks a third time. Who's getting ready to, getting ready to, to turn around? And all of a sudden the door opened. A man said, "What do you want?" She said, "I was in prayer across the street, and the Lord spoke to me to tell you about Jesus." A tear began to walk, come down his face. He said, "Lady." I was just up in my bedroom with a 45 in my mouth, getting ready to end it all. And here you are telling me about Jesus. God wants to use us more than he's ever used us. He wants to give you visions for your boss. Sister, I don't know where you work, but God, yeah, you... Stand to your feet. I don't know where you work, but you've got people around you that are looking at you, and you're an influencer. And the Lord says there's a fresh anointing even this night coming upon you. Put your hands up. Amen. And the gifts of the Holy Ghost that you've personally experienced are going to begin to flow through you from this night forward. Not because of this preacher, but because Jesus is right now putting his hands upon your head, and you're going to be changed. And you've had a burden for people. Some people have even said and called you names and, and accused you and, and looked down at you because you have a burden for those who are down and out. But God says, I'm going to open up a ministry, saith the Lord, and you're going to begin to prophesy over people. They're not going to understand what they're hearing, but they'll understand what they're feeling. And you will lead many, the Lord says to Jesus Christ. And you will be a soul winner. And the very vision, even... Is this your husband? Stand to your feet. Even the very vision that you have for a personal home. I don't know if it's building. I don't know if it's buying. But God is going to bring it to pass. Because you guys are going to enter into a brand new ministry. And that, and that ministry is not going to be in competition with this house. It's going to flow. And you bring people in. Those who you can't lead to the Lord on the street, bring them in. Brother, you've got a big, huge... Put your left hand out just like it. You, you don't even see it, but in the spirit, you've got a big, huge fishnet. A huge fishnet. And God says, begin to throw it out. Hallelujah. Begin to throw it out. Just begin to throw it out. There's people that you can talk to. None of us in this room could talk to. But you can talk to them. And you don't need to do the whole Romans Road type of thing. All you need is mention one name, Jesus. All you've got to do is lay your hands on them. And you don't need to have a degree. You don't need to have all this stuff. All you need is to be obedient to the voice of God. So, Lord, I pray for this couple in the name of Jesus. Can we stretch our hands out toward them today? Amen. Lord, in the name of Jesus, you're going to lead these people, these two, amen, to the, into a great harvest. And this church is going to be, amen, a place where they can populate, amen, souls. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Let me tell you something. Something is happening. Something's happening in the world. And all we've got to do is be tuned in to www.jesus. That's all we've got to do. No, I'm serious. That's all we've got to do. Listen, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I don't know, maybe this church won't have me back here. <laughs> I'm going to encourage you to do something that God challenged me to do 10 years ago. You're not going to like me, I'm telling you. Shut your radio and television off. It's not the bad news of the kingdom. It's the good news of the kingdom. I said it's not the bad news. Listen, if all we do is suck on the bad news, 
we get our eyes off Jesus. Yes. Peter got his eyes off Jesus and on the bad news. And Jesus had to wake him up. Oh, no, don't even get me started with that. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. All I know is that there are souls. I'll tell you one last story and then we're going to end in prayer. Just a few days ago, I was talking to a young man. Got a conversation going. This guy was out in the street and he and I were talking and, and I, I asked him his name. And I told him his name. And uh, I said, what do you do? He goes, oh, I'm, I, I'm a musician. You know, oh, really? What instrument? And he's not really an instrument. He goes, I, I, I sing. Okay, what do you sing? He goes, well, it's sort of like hip-hop, but it's not hip-hop. It's uh, more like esoteric and spiritual and, and uh, you know, getting in touch with the universe. And I said, okay. Um, and all of a sudden, I, I'm, you know, he, he goes his way, I go mine. We're both working, actually. Some lady had hired me to do some yard work for her and hired him, too. And so all of a sudden, the Lord gave me something. And I went back to him, and I said, his name's Casey. I said, Casey. I said, listen, if you're really interested in that stuff, I said, you need to dialogue with Jesus. He's got it figured out, man. He said, oh, yeah. <laughs> he said, everybody's talking about Christ consciousness. I said, yeah, and let me tell you something. The only thing of it is you've got to say one name, Jesus, because that's the name that is the high name. He said, oh, I'll do that. <laughs> I'm telling you something. God will put language inside of you. Amen. That other people will be able to understand. I'm not talking about compromise. I'm talking about where they are. Hallelujah. I'm telling you that there are young people right now. Amen. That God will send in. And they will be your next elders. They will be your next youth leaders. They will be your next, amen, musicians and the worship team. They will be your next tithe givers. They will be your next evangelists. They will be the next prophets and apostles and teachers and pastors in the church. Amen. I'm here to say we serve a God of wonders. Can we stand to our feet today? Oh, man, 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 man. Come on, let's just put our hands up because I believe all over this place the Spirit of the Lord is already blowing tonight and God is bringing a freshness in our spirit. Pastor, minister, amen, evangelist, whoever you are, amen, you have come to this place and let's be honest, as I said the other night, you're dry, but God is going to blow upon you and those old dry bones, amen, are going to take on flesh, amen, they're going to take on sinew, they're going to take on, hallelujah, muscle, they're coming back to life and and it's talking about you and me. Amen. And God is going to raise up a church. Amen. In this last hour, the world wants to say the church is dead. But Jesus says, no, you haven't even seen anything yet. There's more. I'm a God of wonders. I'm a God of miracles. I'm a God of power. Hallelujah. 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 I want you right now just to make your way down. All of us, make your way down to this front tonight. I believe the, the spirit and flow of God, amen, is in this place. Amen. God is going to redirect some of us. God is going to totally revamp. Amen. He's going to totally reestablish. He's going to renew our vision. He's going to refresh us in the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I believe there's some of you that are going to go home tonight and lay hands on somebody and they're going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. I believe there's gas station attendants that you're going to witness to. I believe there's postmen and post ladies that you're going to witness to. I believe that there are people, amen, in the back alley, amen, they're out, out of touch with the reality on drugs and you're going to say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be delivered, be set free, amen. It's not the time to look at the hindrances, it's time, hallelujah, to look at the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're living in the greatest days, hallelujah, Lord. Lord, we thank you today. We thank you today. Come on, if you're hungry, just begin writing your own, amen, your own language, your own way. Begin to cry out to God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Equip me, Lord. Change me, Lord. Oh God, afresh and anew, I need you today. 
I need your power. I need your blessing. I need a fresh touch from God. I need a touch, Lord, so I can touch others. Oh, Rabba Shabba Baba 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 Hallelujah. Oh, Rabba Baba Kasha. Oh, Rabba Baba 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Rabba Baba 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 I want to I want to say something I want to say something for those of you who are north of 65 you might say well that's great pastor preacher but I'm retired I've got health issues I feel alone myself I don't even know who to talk to I'm going to tell you something right now Senior saint, seasoned saint is what I like to call you. Seasoned saint, you've got more, Sister Mer, inside of you than you realize. And you know, some of us who've got the gray and glasses, never thought I'd have these. A lot of times all it does is take a hug. See, well, I don't identify with young people. What do you mean? You were one once. <laughs> They're not like you, but you've been like them. And you know as well as anybody else that a lot of these young people just need a hug. Just need love. Just need somebody that's going to pour. They're going to be able to pour out their heart to And you're going, to, you're going to be listening, and you're going to say, I don't understand a word of what they're saying. <laughs> but it's okay. Because it's not about understanding. It's about giving and letting the love of God flow out of you. Think about when you were young. You didn't know anything. You stumbled into church. You were making mistakes. Maybe you're even living in sin. But somebody put their arm around you and said, God bless you. Welcome tonight. What are you doing after church? Can I buy a hamburger? It sounds simple, right? But I'm here to tell you something. Isn't that what Jesus said? Zacchaeus, you come down. I'm going to your house today. Come on. You and I, we're going down to the burger game. Let's go. And just being in the presence of God changed your life. So I want to say, sum it up by saying this. You're not useless. You're useful in this church. I said you're useful in this church. Amen. Hallelujah. So Lord, we thank you tonight. Now I wonder tonight, I, I believe also, I'm going to say one more thing. Because I feel this really strong. I felt this, this, this the second time. There's people in here you have not really prophesied for a long time. And tonight God is saying, prime the pump. Prime the pump. Call out to God. Prime the pump. Because God wants to begin to use you, amen, in unusual places. Unusual places. God is going to begin to speak to some of you. And you're going to say, Lord, I feel uncomfortable with saying that to that person sitting across the bus from me. But the Lord says, say it anyway. Do it anyway. Go over there anyway. Pray for them anyway. Hallelujah. Amen. If that's you, I want you to lift both of your hands. Because I believe tonight, by the Holy Ghost, before these meetings are over with, I believe Brother Phil and I are going to lay hands on a bunch of you, if not all of you. Amen. But God is going to tonight, 
prime the pump. And some of you are going to revisit, amen, not what you had, but revisit something fresh and new. Hallelujah. And you're going to begin to prophesy again. Amen. Some of you have had gifts. You need to polish them off. Amen. And say, Lord, amen, I, pr I prophesied and laid hands on everybody in the church. It's time to begin to do it outside. It's time to begin to do it, amen, to the kooky and the weird and the strange because deliverance is mine, amen, the Lord says. Deliverance is mine, the Lord says. Oh, hallelujah. Can we just, amen, one last time, lift our hands and worship Him as the, amen, the singer sings something. Praise God.
all gods, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. God, you're doing wonders. You've done a wonder in all of us. And Lord, we're going to be your hands and your voice. We're going to reach out to those that need your love. Those that need you, oh God. You've released us tonight to rely upon the God of wonders. Do wonderful things, Lord, through us. Let us be your hands and your voice. Bring in the harvest. For the world is ripe, God. Thrust forth the laborers into the fields. Let the sickle be put in every hand. Let there be a reaping, oh God. Father, we thank you, God. We're caught up in this holy moment. God, do what only you can do. We thank you for tonight. We thank you for the voice of your servant. We thank you for the challenge of your word. Who is like unto thee? Nothing is like unto you, O oh God. You do wonders. And we praise you and thank you for your glorious wonders that you do. Continue to move. Continue to bless. And Lord Jesus, as we dismiss tonight, Give us opportunity to say the name Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, thank you. Hallelujah. Father, we love you with all of our hearts. We look forward, Lord, to tomorrow and what you're going to do for us. And Lord, now let your grace, your mercy, and love be extended. To every household represented here and every life standing here in this holy moment. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen.